I might actually have a life hack to start you off with here in the video. A lot of you said to get this AMVR facial interface with the ice silk cover. This is their new one. So I ordered it and I saw another company had one. I ordered it too because I wanted to compare them. So if you look, I actually ordered an AMVR one and I ordered an Hour VR one, which the Hour VR one was $5 less. And besides that little sticker, these are the exact same interface as far as I can see. Let's open them up. We're gonna try something we've never tried on the channel here. Simultaneous, oh, come on. Simultaneous unboxing. This is much harder than it looks. <laughs> Let go. Okay, I do not recommend that. Now, my worry here is these are so similar, I need to keep these boxes very specific. I mean, I don't know about you, but these, these are looking identical. This is not a strange practice. I'm, I haven't confirmed that AMVR does a lot of drop shipping, but basically drop shipping is when there's a manufacturer out there who makes a ton of a product. They might make, you know, 10,000 of the exact same product. They will offer small rebrands or something that differentiates it, but multiple sellers will be selling that exact same product, different names, different little branding or some minor change, different packaging, but ultimately they're all selling the same crap. And this one is, I mean, this is so identical. It's even got the AMVR logo on the front of both of them. This is the exact same one, but one of them is $5 cheaper under a different brand name. To add some more fuel to the fire of this whole weird thing about AMVR suddenly having all these different brand names shipping under them, I had actually ordered another facial interface that arrived while this video was being edited. I just opened it and I've got yet another AMVR facial interface that claims to look a little different under the brand name UPOC, UPOK. As you can see here, my Amazon says this was just delivered today, UPOC. And in this, it doesn't show an AMVR on the box like it clearly does in this box. Usually we unbox in the unboxing studio, but since I'm here and confused, it's the freaking, it's the same crap. It just does not come with the ice silk interface this time. Exact same interface, just without that face pad under a whole different brand name. I'm gonna have to reach out to AMVR and try and figure out what the hell they're doing. By nature, it's not a sketchy practice, but it becomes sketchy because you get people that are jumping in and out of drop shipping. They're just in it for the money. They don't care about the products. Very little quality assurance. So it can be really risky for the industry as a whole. But I guess at this point, there's not really any need to review these separately. These are the exact same thing. Literally, the only difference I can tell so far is the AMVR one came a little extended. It has this extension ability built in. So if you have glasses, you can make the interface longer. It just came out instead of being at the same position as the other one. So that is all I see so far as far as differences, but they both advertise the same ice silk pad. It's supposed to help keep the interface cooler. They got the same vents. They got the same nose pads. I mean, these are literally, it's the same box. It's the same freaking product. So we originally reviewed the AMVR facial interface before they made this new edition with the ice silk. And I said at the time it was about the best thing that was on the market, but it didn't seem to hold up even to our usual standards from what we were used to to the Quest 2. So it wasn't ultimately something I wanted to use. This seems like it's basically the same plastic frame is that it's using the same snap in snap out extensions, which I personally am not a fan of just because they're so hard to adjust and they feel like they just may not last. If you're not someone who's constantly moving the facial interface in and out to accommodate other people for glasses, maybe that's fine. But if you can get in close and even see the gear here, it's just plastic on plastic. And the top one, when I found with the old one, it was a little bit more, it feels a little bit more flimsy even on the top end. It's just all plastic. I'm not positive this is any different than the AMVR one I have, except maybe this whole ice silk thing they mentioned. People are saying, this is nice. The name ice silk is clever. It makes you think that this is gonna keep you a lot cooler when you're using it. But the problem is because it's like this velvety design, it will soak up sweat. We'll do testing, thermal testing, to see if this actually keeps us cooler in VR. We'll check it against the stock pad. And of course, we'll test the fit here. It does have vents at the top and bottom, which will help let air through. People had said the AMVR ones, the things they weren't liking, it just didn't really work with the M3. And it's a big question of if it'll work with the S3. Because the problem was the M3 had very little flexibility up here. So you kind of, if you want it to work, you kind of had to leave it overlapping, which means it's going to push on your face wrong because this is going to stick further out. You're not going to actually be able to utilize the forehead pad very well, which I can see the complaint there already because it is putting the pressure back on my face a little bit. Also a ton of light bleed. Where are you bleeding in through? It doesn't seem like the light's bleeding through the vents. Boy, it is really fighting with my M3 here on this headset. I might have to switch head straps, honestly. We've got it kind of in. It does compete for space up here, although people say it won't work. I feel like it's it's working. It's just not working well. So for the life of me, can't figure out where the heck that light bleed is coming from. What the heck? Strange. We'll circle back to that issue. I still have over here my Oblect expensive $90 custom facial interface. There was a review on that. I'll leave at the end of the video in case some of you are interested in that. I'm gonna try and see how hard it is to get this AMVR interface on here. 
with the new S3. I know a fair amount of you out there said you got the AMVR interface and you're not unhappy with it at all. Maybe I've gotten a little picky over my time of reviewing tons of interfaces. It's hard to get in, the plastic doesn't feel great. I'm not in love with it. I think the biggest problem is gonna be though, even with this, I don't think this is gonna work with the S3 either. Like. It's on and it's functioning. I have to have the fan all the way at the top. Boy, I'm gonna declare that it it works, but it's not incredible. You can get it to work, but you're gonna like, you can hear that clicking, it's fighting with it at the top here. You have to keep the forehead part as far up as you can. Yeah, I'm not in love with it. If I was rocking the Kiwi Elite facial interface, I think I might like that better. One kind of cool detail, if you can position it perfectly, and it's not easy to do that, but the fan blows out the bottom, so if I get it just right, I can actually feel some of the air pushes down through those vents and it's gonna help keep me from fogging up. But I mean, it has to be just right and this slides forward and it messes it up. You feel these crunching back and forth. It's definitely not a lovely fit. To do a true test with this interface, I think I'm gonna have to switch head straps. What AMVR has done here is they've made this big, thick top part. You can see this pretty easily when you compare it to the stock interface. Look at how tall this is versus how not tall that is. They've done that so that this allows for a thicker forehead spot that helps distribute that weight a little bit. It's the same idea in principle that the S3 does, but it has this whole huge spot here that already takes care of that for you. So this is more of an interface that's meant if you have the stock strap, or if you have an elite style strap, like this one I'm gonna put on here. But if you have a halo type strap, now you're just having it interact and causing a problem. What I would probably do personally, if I really liked this interface and wanted to keep it, is I would probably just dremel this thing down a little ways. Yeah, that would be annoying to have to do that yourself. It probably wouldn't look great unless you're really good with the dremel. But if I cut that down even a quarter of an inch, it would probably give me the clearance I need for this to work okay. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, roger. So I do wonder if a lot of the people who are giving this facial interface really good reviews are using it with a stock strap or with the elite strap. But especially with the stock strap, what it would do is it would actually improve the whole headset in a weird way. Because not only would it be more comfortable, you wouldn't have this weird material here, but that thickness on the forehead would then add a bigger area to disperse that pressure. So it would make you feel like even the stock strap was more livable. So that would explain why a lot of people are jumping and saying, oh, I really like this. Or in the Oblick video, I talked about how I didn't love the AMVR interface. I was talking about their original one, not this new Silk one. Although I'm pretty sure this is the exact same one. It just has new pads. This bigger, thicker facial interface does make it harder to get a top strap in. So I'm gonna take that off to do it. Boy, I can see where if you rock in stock or elite, this is a huge improvement because it also has completely killed the light bleed issue I was having with the M3 and the S3. Like if I really tilt my head down and these bright lights are really shining on the vents, a little bit does get through the vents. But I mean, it's barely anything. And it's so far back that it's hard to notice. Once the headset's on, you're not gonna see it with a panel on lighting your eyes up. So I'm gonna take these away and test them for a while. I'm gonna test this pad. We're gonna test the ice silk pad. We're gonna see what it does as far as temperatures and heat on the headsets. I'm gonna try to see if it is livable to use it with the S3 as well, because I love this S3. This is my top recommended strap. And if it doesn't work with this, it is gonna be kind of a deal breaker, at least for me personally, because I'm not gonna switch over to an elite strap just to use this. But give me some time, I'll get back to you. AMVR ice silk interface or our VR ice face silk interface, same one, $5 less. After days and hours spent testing these, we got lots of data. One does not seem like it wants to work with the meta charging dock with the stock nose light cover, which they advertise is gonna completely block out light, gonna work for you. Unfortunately, I could not get it to work. It would start working, I'd move it around, it seemed like it was working, I'd leave it alone for a few minutes, instantly it was off again. If you took off the nose cover, now you're getting a lot of light bleed up through your nose area, but it did seem to work then. And it's shocking that even just this little tiny bit of silicone seemed like it was getting in the way just enough to keep it from staying reliable. So if you have the stock meta charging dock, you really like it, it may be a no-go unless you're okay with foregoing the nose piece. For those of you out there who are curious, let's see what kind of weight you're gonna be adding to your Quest. A stock facial interface without a silicone cover on it. So weighs approximately 66 grams. The AMVR one with the nose guard and the pleather pad, 73 grams, 72 grams maybe. Not a huge difference. With the ice silk and without the nose guard, 70 grams. So negligible four to six gram difference over the stock one. A little bit heavier, not surprising with all the plastic, with all the vents on it and everything there. Before we get into the cons and pros, ultimately for me, I gotta say right now, this is not my new interface. I'm not gonna be sticking to this because I love the S3 Pro and it was getting in the way too much. It was interacting too much. You might be able to make it work or you could do some slight modifying to it and get it to work with it, but I'm not gonna go through that, especially when I have a facial interface that I'm liking, albeit a very expensive one. We'll start with the cons as per usual. If you are someone who needs to go back and forth between you play and your sibling has glasses, they also play and you're having to constantly adjust back and forth for glasses. The stock interface, although sometimes it likes to break, is a lot simpler with just a single button to where you can even 
adjust this thing while it's still on the Quest. This AMBR one is not going to be that way at all. You got to take it off, which if you're like me, you may not love the sound and feel of taking this off every time you have to adjust it. And then to go to adjust it, got to get in here, move this out. One, two, three, four. And now you have that space for someone with glasses, but that's every time. And then to adjust it back, nope, so you're back to, Oh, I hate the sound these things make, honestly. I don't love that about it. The charge dock issue, that's, we already talked about that, but that is something that lands in cons. And a little bit of light bleed, depending on your face shape and how this thing works, especially through events. Not a deal breaker, but for people who really hate that, it is something to think about. Now, it's not exactly gonna land in the cons, but I do wanna talk about this, the marketing on the ice silk pad, whatever they're calling it. It actually does not, and we went through multiple tests, multiple rounds, because I kept thinking I had to be wrong. It does not maintain lower temperatures. It feels more comfortable which might make you think that it's cooler, it's nicer. But what it does do is it does absorb the sweat. It keeps the sweat from rolling into your eyes, down your face. It does mean you're gonna have to go through a process of cleaning this every so often because it really gets in there. It gets real wet real fast. What I thought maybe they had done was like the VR cover one we reviewed before that's actually made with that cooling gel that you see on top of mattress toppers and other things that's proven to actually help dispel heat faster and balance temperatures. I thought maybe they had made it with that. I'm quite certain they have not. And no, it's just cheap, crappy white foam inside. Some kind of memory foam. Yeah, cheap, but hey. And in all of our testing, not only did this run hotter than the stock pad, it ran harder than pretty much every other facial interface out there. You do feel a little better while you're playing because there is some breathability. It's letting some of the air through. Your lenses didn't seem to fog up, but it didn't seem to fog up with this leather pad either. So I think that they chose a really smart name because it kind of insinuates that it's doing something to cool when really all it's doing is absorbing your sweat and letting it breathe a little bit. So clever marketing, but but not, not something like I was hoping would actually make the difference. Like the VR cover we saw in the initial testing video, we found this thing even in ambient room temperatures somehow maintained about two degrees lower because it was just that good at dispelling its own heat. So that brings us to pros. If you have been rocking the stock facial interface or you're using an elite strap or the stock strap this whole time, this thing's gonna feel night and day better. It is far more comfortable. The way it fits on your face just feels worlds better. The vents allow it to breathe better. But the biggest difference in pleather or in the ice silk pad is it just doesn't feel scratchy and awful. And this stock pad feels kind of scratchy and awful. Some people are gonna say, oh, they're fine with it on their face, they don't notice it. But even if you just take your stock face on your face and you kind of rub your finger on it and you like rub it on, this is so smooth. This is so smooth. That is probably the biggest difference and probably the reason why a lot of people are gonna be surprised that I'm not in love with this AMVR facial interface. I've tested a bunch and there's other ones that are just like that and better. Ultimately, the biggest improvement is just the fact that you went from really crappy to decent and so it feels like a big change. The other fact being this is so much thicker now that with a stock strap or anything, it is dispersing that pressure much better on your forehead, on the sides of your head. So it feels a lot nicer. And the price is not bad if you get the Hour VR one, which is the same one. So why not just get that? One last quick update here in this whole AMVR weird saga where all these different head straps are showing up with their branding and their brand name. I reached out to them through email at the beginning of this. I hit them up on Twitter every way I could. Finally got a response back. Unfortunately, the response just said that they're currently on vacation from the 6th to the 7th through the Lunar New Year. So I'll have to update you in a future video as to why this is happening. It's likely, if I had to guess, some sort of a dropship issue, but maybe there's other brands that somehow bought some of their stuff and are reselling it without their knowledge. I don't know. I'm trying to give the benefit of the doubt here, but we'll let you know when we know more. So with all of that, I will leave a link in the description to the Hour VR one with a few caveats that it's not gonna work if you wanna get a Halo strap eventually, S3, M3, whatever. It's probably not one to get with that. But if you're someone who's already got the Kiwi Elite and you love it, any other Elite strap and you love it, or you're someone who's sticking with the stock strap and you're fine with it, this is probably as good as it's gonna get for now in the price range, especially there's a coupon on this one, puts the whole thing well below $30. So in that case, it's worth it. It's still not my favorite thing in the world, although my favorite one currently is really expensive, but I'll leave a link up here in the corner in case you wanna watch about that. But there's also a lot of other facial interfaces in development, I know, so keep an eye out. We'll be reviewing all those for you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you. I'll see you in another reality.